Welcome to Indivisible. I'm your host, John Stubbins. Thanks for joining us tonight, America. Free speech is being violated for conservatives everywhere. It starts in our schools and it ends in everyday society, affecting everything, including our places of work, corporate America, etc. It seems like companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, Disney, they're all telling you what you can and you can't do. Ruling your life with the threat of punishment if you don't toe the line or, or do as you're told. My next guest is out there every day fighting for your right to remain free, to be able to speak and say what you want to say, support who you want to support for president, have conservative views, Christian views, to keep you from being silenced and punished by these kind of companies. I want to welcome to the show Justin Danhoff, General Counsel and Director of the Free Enterprise Project and National Center for Public Policy Research. Thanks for coming on to the show tonight, Justin. Thanks so much, John. This is such an important topic. I'm happy to talk about it. Well, and we're, we're thrilled to have you because we support what you're doing. Your background is really impressive, Justin. Please tell our audience about the Free Enterprise Project and why it matters to them. Yeah, so the Free Enterprise Project, we started it about a decade ago now out of the National Center for Public Policy Research, one of the longest standing conservative think tanks in the United States of America. And what we were witnessing was at that time, we called it Corporate America's Slow March to the Left. We were curious, um, why were companies taking, uh, for example, the position to support Obamacare, right? When these are big pharmaceutical and um, you know big insurance companies, we thought that was a little curious considering all the way back in 1993 and 1994, the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies stood up against Hillary Care. Fast forward to 2010 and they're all on board with Obamacare. We thought that's pretty interesting and we started digging deeper. We find out they're supporting things like cap and trade legislation. Large industrial companies were thinking that's odd. And then we saw that they were attacking religious freedom at the state level um, and through the courts. Why are companies in, even involved in these debates? And we took a look and we found out that the left was using shareholder activism to get corporate America into their cultural lane. We didn't really know anything about it at the time, to be completely honest with you, but we said, hey, we better get engaged in this fight because every year what we were seeing is between 60 and 100 organizations on the left. And we're talking about the big unions, the Teamsters, the SEIU of the world, the green pieces of the world, all the way through asset managers and state pension funds of liberal states were using their power of corporate activism through the shareholder process to bend corporate America to their will. And we've started the Free Enterprise Project to be a thorn in the side of the left when they're engaged in this and the companies that are engaged in reducing liberty. You know, first of all, we appreciate you doing what you do for standing up, for, for fighting for us out there. I wish more people would do what you're doing and stand up and not be afraid to do so. You've taken on companies like Disney and Starbucks, Apple, et cetera. And, I, and I've looked at that research that you've done. And, you know, I was sad to see that Starbucks denied your proposal. Uh, what did you find out from Disney? Did Disney accept the proposal? It sounded like their shareholders wanted it. Yeah. So, um, first of all, you know, in the reverse order with Disney, right? They have a new CEO, Bob Chapek. Bob Iger's been the CEO for, for quite a long time. And under their leadership, ABC News has drifted further and further to the left with their extreme anti-conservative slant when they present the news. And Iger is a well-known liberal. So I went to the shareholder meeting this year uh, in March, and I asked the new CEO, Bob Chapek, if they were going to change course and get back to objective news, not telling viewers what to think, but presenting the news in an objective way so that viewers can make an informed decision on their own. And let me tell you, 
Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The new CEO, Bob Chapik, stuck his head in the sand just as Bob Iger has for years, denied that there's liberal bias at ABC. Straight up denied. He said his first act as the new CEO was to go to the headquarters in Manhattan. And he th what he said he found of the ABC News headquarters in Manhattan was nothing but professional, objective individuals, no bias whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's, it's a laughable concept, you know, or it's a laughable thought on its face, especially in light of the fact that I actually asked the question based off the great groundbreaking work that James O'Keefe and his team at Project Veritas had done by yeah. exposing ABC producers and on-air talent actually telling the truth every once in a while, accidentally, mind you, in front of a camera that James's team had put in place. To, to, you know, where they flat, flat out admitted that they don't cover President Trump fairly, uh, that this is a decision made by the bosses, and the bosses regularly spike stories that would be uncomfortable, uncomfortable to powerful liberals, such as the Clinton family. And so, you know, based off that evidence, you know, it's who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes, right? And then, and then at Starbucks, this is, you know, you know, John, this is disturbing. I, I, I watched the video, by the way, of the of the presentation that you made, and it, it just kills me. It's like, why are these companies refusing to recognize conservative views, thoughts, rights? It's like you brought up the point that I thought was extremely smart, which is that conservatives intentionally aren't going to Starbucks. I know I don't, okay? And I would never want to work for Starbucks. Some of their policies are just insane. You, I'm sure you remember back uh, when they were uh, when the when the, they were having people come into the into the coffee shops at Starbucks and using their bathrooms. Remember oh, that yeah. whole thing? And it's like ever since then, it's just been one insane thing after another. And you know what? I make my own coffee at home. It's better than Starbucks. Why am I going to spend five dollars for a cup of coffee or or a latte? to come in and support these kinds of views that bash people like me or uh, or almost anybody that I know that thinks like I do. It's insane. Well, it's, it is mind boggling when you think that they're, you know, a, a, a consumer largely beverage and food company, right? This is, you know, people using disposable income. And when the percentage of Americans that identify as conservative is most polling somewhere around 40%, and the percentage of Americans that identify as liberal is always in the low to mid 20s, the rest being independent. Wouldn't you think you'd want to open up your marketplace to more potential consumers? And that's the pitch I made. So, you know, on a little more granular level, what we had done is we filed a shareholder resolution with Starbucks. And we base all of our resolutions, by the way, off of liberal resolutions. And there's, there's reasonings for that. Um, and liberals for years have been filing resolutions with corporations to change their equal employment opportunity policies. Okay, so they filed with companies demanding that they, for example, accept transgender folks, gender identity, the whole, you know, LGBTQ, elemental P into their equal employment opportunity policies. So what did we do? We, we filed a resolution and said, we're all for diversity but not diversity of what someone looks like or what gender they claim to be on a given Tuesday. Rather, diversity of thought, diversity of viewpoint, diversity of political ideology, right? right? If you want to, and then I had a meeting with the executives about the proposal, with a handful of executives, as a matter of fact. And I told them everything that you just led this segment in with. I said, look, I go to conservative conferences all around the country. I'm part of the conservative movement in Washington, D.C. We don't serve Starbucks at any of our conferences. None of us frequent your stores. And frankly, I work and I'm close with a lot of very talented individuals that are great business minds, great lawyers, great academics, great policy thinkers. None of us would ever consider working or applying for a job at your company. But guess what? If you were to change your equal employment opportunity policy to say, we protect you even if you have a political view that management doesn't agree with, right? That we're opening ourselves up to acceptance of viewpoint diversity, you might, you might just be able to change a few minds. 
Maybe right. perhaps if you signal to conservatives that we don't literally hate your guts, folks will go buy one of your $5 lattes. Right. But that's not the case right now. And so with all of that information, Starbucks still didn't care, folks. Nope. They I still to the, rejected the resolution. I listened to the whole thing. It, it, and uh, it's like they're just, they're out of touch. They, they think that they're so cool and so woke, but the reality is they're lost. We're going to take a quick break, America. We'll be right back with Justin Danhoff. We're back with Justin Danhoff, and I want to bring in now Melissa Isaac with the Isaac Law Firm, Montgomery, Alabama. Welcome, Melissa, to the show. Thank you. Good to see you, John. Good to I'm see you, on too, with, Justin. I'm on with Justin. I was going to say, have you been listening in uh, to, to Justin's comments? I have. I've been listening to the whole interview. I'd, I'd like you to interject, Melissa. What's going on out there? Well, you know, oddly enough, I think we have federal employment laws that already prohibit discrimination against job applicants and employees based upon membership and, you know, protected classes, including race, sex, national origin, age, religion, things like that. And a lot of these protections have come about because of differences in viewpoints. Now, someone might identify as a woman, even though they're a man, and we might disagree with that viewpoint, but all of a sudden they become a protected class because of their perceptions, but yet our viewpoints are not protected. So, you know, it, it reminds me too of a, a gentleman in Silicon Valley, uh, Mr. Demore, I believe his name was, he was fired from his job at Google because of a 10 page manifesto he wrote challenging the tech giants diversity policy. But, you know, he, he ultimately dismissed his case due, due to an arbitration clause. But nonetheless, he wasn't considered in this protected class. So are conservatives a protected class? I think that's the question. And the I think the answer is no, we're not. No, no, we're not. And Justin, I know that you're out there on the front lines fighting for conservatives. The question, I, I, I just, it just keeps boggling my mind. Why the resistance, Justin? Why yeah, the resistance? I think there's a couple answers to it. First, it's, it's a groupthink mentality, right? The left, the left is very guilty of this groupthink mentality. And so one of the shareholder resolutions that I filed with a lot of big tech companies is actually not at the employee level, but at the board level. Right. Where the left is pushing for board diversity and their definition of diversity is, of course, what someone looks like. Right. Affirmative action, essentially, for corporate boards. And we started two years ago filing these resolutions saying that your boards should start reflecting viewpoint diversity. Right. Because it all starts from the top. And if the top is just a liberal lemmings enclave, interestingly enough, we've had seven major companies, including Walmart, Walgreens and Pepsi agree to adopt this resolution. And now when they look for new board members, they see if their board is politically balanced or not. And if they're out of alignment, they try and align it with their new board searches. Guess who's opposed to this resolution? Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Twitter, Netflix, any company that you think of as a left-leaning company, Salesforce, another great example. They have all rejected this resolution. So think about that. Their board is saying, no, we like the fact that we're a liberal enclave that demands adherence to our worldview within our organization. It's and they just, just don't care. They just don't care. They don't even, I guess they, it, does, it doesn't dawn on them that they're alienating half of the country, if not more, from, you know, and I know so many people that they won't go see Disney films. They won't buy Starbucks coffee. I mean, this is going to keep getting worse and worse and worse until they figure out that there are other people out there that don't necessarily agree with some of these warped views. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, America.
We're back with Justin Danhoff and Melissa Isaac. Justin, Melissa works with men, pretty much all men, uh, representing them in you know child custody cases and divorce proceedings and, and what have you down in uh, down in Montgomery. And I know that you work very closely with Project Twenty One, and you know that we have a huge fatherless problem out there. Uh, and I think the rate last I looked was 73% in the black community alone. It's just absurd, the numbers. And one of the issues that's near and dear to my heart is this issue of fatherlessness. And I work with uh, the First Hour for Men, the Fatherhood Commission, uh, with Eric uh, Carroll, Dad Talk USA, with Melissa Isaac, and, and many others trying to bring this to the surface. I'd like to start working with you uh, and, and and help you bring you into this group so that we can get more thoughts, more opinions. And, you know, abortion, infanticide, all these things that are going on that create this problem and, are, and contribute to the problem. What are you finding in the black community? Is anything changing on this scale or is it pretty much status quo right now? Well, the first thing to know about it is the media doesn't want to talk about it. So you and Melissa talking about it, this is super important. You're not allowed to blame the fatherless problem. You're not allowed to blame single mothers. They are sim It's a simply off limit topic of conversation. So point number one being, this is really incredible that we're talking about it today. And this conversation needs to be happening in a lot more venues. So kudos. Uh, and I applaud the, you know, the willingness to talk about the issue. And there's also a tie-in, unfortunately, to corporate America in this case. 38 major corporations fund Planned Parenthood. Oh. The, the As You So Network, which is the large network of liberal investors, they're filing shareholder resolutions demanding that more companies, get this, quote, make the business case for abortion. Now, you tell me, John, how is killing off potential future customers good for anybody's business? Unless you're in the abortion industrial complex itself, I fail to see how that's good for any business. But this comes on the heels of last year when Georgia passed their heartbeat bill, right? We had 185 CEOs of major American corporations sign a full page advertisement in the New York Times saying, that pro-life legislation is, quote, bad for business. Once again, I'd like some intrepid reporter to ask a single one of those CEOs how killing potential future customers is good for their bottom line. It's sick. It's sick, Justin. Melissa, I know you've got some thoughts on this. Oh, gosh, there, there, there's so much to talk about in regards to this. Not only is Justin absolutely correct in killing a uh, our future generation. I don't know how that's good for anyone, to be honest, especially for business owners. You look at this from a human rights perspective. You, we're saying, to, we're telling these women, it's up to you. This is your body. We're completely disregarding the fact that this is a human life that they're carrying in their womb, and also the fact that does this father have any rights? So this, so basically, we have a mother who determines if this father is allowed to be a father or not, because the right to abort a child doesn't belong to unmarried women. It belongs to women in general. So this is a huge issue in, in the, the men's rights um, community and in, in the you know, uh, father's rights community, because I can't tell you how many men I've had come in in tears and say, my wife is pregnant and she wants to get a divorce, uh, an abortion, or my girlfriend is pregnant and she wants to get an abortion. The law doesn't, the law now, I mean, there's laws that are now being challenged. Alabama passed a, a very strong anti-abortion law as well, which is now being challenged. But this isn't just a woman's issue. This is not. This is a society issue. This is a father's issue. And for a woman to decide whether a father should have the opportunity to be a father or not, that's it's preposterous and it's absurd. It really is. It really is. And it's, like I said, it's sick is what it is. And it's it's ruining our the, the, just the fabric of who we are. It's like, did we forget who we are, people? We need to start asking the hard questions. We need to start standing up and speaking out. Too many people are sitting on the sidelines, sitting on their hands, saying nothing, doing nothing, thinking it, it's somebody else's problem. Well, 
It's all of our problems because it's affecting all of us in so many walks of life. The tentacles of this thing run deep. And I think Justin was alluding to that earlier. Right. I think Justin hit the nail on the head when he said nobody wants to blame single mothers. The fact is this, is that prisons are full of inmates raised by single mothers. That's not a dig at single mothers. That is just saying that fathers are extremely important in the, the raising of children, but it's not politically correct because the perception is you're attacking single mothers. I want to make sure that everybody out there uh, visits nationalcenter.org and make sure that you start paying attention to what they're doing over there and why it matters to you, because believe me, it does. Justin, do you have any closing comments before we take another break? Uh, just when it comes to the broad issue here, we cannot separate race from the abortion issue, right? It, Planned Parenthood was founded by a well-known racist, Margaret Sanger, and to yeah. this day, they are living out her mission, the disproportionate number of abortion clinics that are in the African-American community is staggering and it's appalling on top of the life issue. This is a race issue. And not only that, I'll, I'm going to just say one other thing. And, and, and the left always says, well, your tax dollars aren't going towards abortions. Well, sure they are. We see it. We know it's happening. And it doesn't matter how they're hiding it or how the, the, those dollars are infiltrating, they're getting to Planned Parenthood and a lot of legislation out there is affecting this and they're getting money, folks. They're getting your money to do abortions, to commit infanticide. That's as sick as it gets. Thank you so much for joining us, Justin. I hope that uh, you'll come back. We've got, we're gonna continue this discussion. Obviously this is a broad issue. And want to dig a little deeper next time. Thank you, Melissa, for coming on and giving us your legal opinion. We'll be right back, America. I'm sure that we'll be continuing this discussion with with Justin uh, as we have him back next time and Melissa. Uh, and I'd also like to bring on Eric Carroll uh, for our next interview with Justin and Melissa. It's, 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 it's an issue that is not going to go away and we have to talk about it. We have to get it out there. We have to address it so that we can deal with it find solutions and stop the bleeding, whether it be at the corporate level, all the way down to what our kids are learning by seeing this happen and ruining the fabric of America. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night, America.